So welcome everybody to ERM 202 Troubleshooting Discovery, part of the 2023 ERM Electronic Resource Management webinar series. This is the official page here of the webinar series. I'm gonna send this out to everybody in the chat just in case they don't already have it. And those of you watching this video via YouTube will find a link to this page in the description of the video. Uh, we are now here, ERM202. Let's just see where we are in the series. So we began with a general overview and background back in September. Then we went on to ordering and activating collections. Then ordering and activating portfolios, only portfolios not part of the collection. Then we did a general overview of maintaining, ongoing maintenance of the electronic resources. And now we're at troubleshooting discovery. We're going to look at four main topics today. And these four main topics come from either comments in the chats from earlier sessions or from emails that were sent to me after the sessions uh, about certain topics. Uh, certain topics came up during the previous sessions but weren't really appropriate to discuss at the time uh, so they're now being discussed in this dedicated session which deals with troubleshooting discovery so everything here relates to discovery discovery being primo or summon we will be showing however in primo uh, how the various functionalities here work uh, also, I will remind everybody that on this page of the webinar series, we have not only the recordings, but also the presentations. So, for example, here we are today on ERM 202 on Tuesday, November 27th, November 7th. Uh, and it says here, see presentations. So here, if I click this link, we get to the presentations and here we are at ERM 202. These are the four presentations on the four topics here. So let's begin without further ado. Uh, one question which came in dealt with making the license information appear in Primo in, Primo, in the view it. And again, this will also apply to summon. So let's take a look and let's open the PowerPoint and go through it but we'll also be looking of course inside alma so what is the question someone asks we have licenses attached to many of our electronic collections but we do not see the license information in primo and that's co it's correct that by default the license information will not appear uh, during a recent webinar, you showed the view online tab and there was a link to the license. And that's also the case. And an example I showed, there was a link there to the license, but we weren't talking at that time about the licenses. So I saved it for now. I also see a link to the license in the Primo of other libraries. How come in our Primo, we do not see a link to the license? Do we need to configure something? So the answer is yes, you do need to configure something. And let's take a look at that. So in this presentation, there's a link also to the online help here about displaying the license information in the View It tab. There's also a link to the information about the license. And let's take a look here of our example. So first of all, we have a license. Let's go to the licenses. So here's the licenses. Uh, we can also get to the licenses in various ways. Let's just head back here. Yep. Okay. Here. Sorry about that. Let me close this one. Okay. Uh, so we're looking here at a, a license called AHEN Publishing. And we want this to display if it's part of a electronic collection. So we have an electronic collection called IG Publishing, Pearson Education. And it is using that license. So let's go to the license or to the electronic collection. Um, let's get out of the configuration. So I am now not in the configuration. I am in the regular Alma. We see I got the link to the configuration below. 
And if we want to first look at the license under acquisitions, acquisitions infrastructure, we have licenses. And we're talking about this license, but what I'm showing applies to all licenses, but this happens to be the specific license that we're referring to. And we can see that it has various license terms. And we can also see the inventory, the electronic resources that have this license. And here's the example that we're gonna be using. So let's go look at that electronic collection for a moment. And we will see in the electronic collection, um, that it has that license. I'm in the general tab and I'm in the section acquisitions and license information. And we can see that it's using the license A10 Publishing, which we just looked at a moment ago. Uh, let's go into Primo now and look at one of the portfolios of this electronic collection. So let's go to the portfolio list here, just so we have an example. And so let's take, let's take one in English. Okay, there's no business that's not show business, marketing in an experience culture. So let's go to Primo and see what we see now. And if we don't see the license, we'll change the configuration so that we do see the license. So I'm gonna sign in just, this isn't necessary to sign in to see the license, but I'm gonna sign in in case anything else is required for signing in. And we'll search for that in the library catalog. And then we'll go to the View It tab by clicking Available Online. So here it is, and we'll say Available Online. And I don't see anywhere here the publishing, the license information. I see a link to go view the portfolio, uh, but I don't see anything about the license. So let's return to the PowerPoint. And we saw that we have the license in the electronic collection. And we searched for this specific um, portfolio. And we don't see the license information. So now we're going to make a configuration change to be able to see the license information. So we're going to go to the Discovery Interface Display Logic Other Settings which is under configuration fulfillment. And we're gonna see there a parameter called enable display of license information and we'll check it. So let's do that. Back into Alma, we'll go to the configuration and to the fulfillment. And here's the discovery interface display logic. Here's the other settings. And here we have enable display of license information. So let's check that enable display of license information and we'll save. And now let's try this again. I'm gonna do a brand new search just to make sure everything's all set up. And now we'll say available online again. And there we go. Now we have a link to the license information, a link that we did not have before. Now, I'll also point out, even though it's not directly related to discovery troubleshooting, <coughs> but just for general knowledge, because sometimes it comes up, the license information here doesn't have any kind of bearing on the functionality of viewing the resource. It's informational purposes only. So now if we click the show license, we see those license terms, or I should say we see some or all, maybe all, but it could be only some of those license information terms because there's another place where we can determine which of these terms we wanna see. And we'll be taking a look at that in a moment. Uh, but now we see that the user comes into Primo and can view the license information for the resource. So we have successfully added the link like the person asked uh, in the question. Let's move on. Uh, so we came in, we went to other settings, we checked the box there next to enable display of license information. Then we saw the link and after clicking it, we saw the license terms. Now, 
like I stated, it's possible also to determine which of those terms we do or do not want to display. So let's take an example here. Let's go look at our example. Let's say, for example, I don't want, let's even take a picture of this so that we can compare it later. So this is what we've got here. And let's say we want to remove this database protection override clause. We don't want to display that. Uh, not, we don't think it's relevant for the user, so we're going to get rid of that one. And maybe there's one that's not appearing, which we do want to display, perhaps. So let's see how we do that. Uh, so we're going to go to Configuration Acquisitions Licenses Manage License Terms. And then we'll see that there will be a column there displayed to the public with the tab select yes or no. So let's do that. So we're back in Elma. We're still in the configuration and we're going to acquisitions and licenses and manage license terms. So we said that we want to remove this database protection override clause. So let's find the database override protection clause. They're all in alphabetical order here. Here it is. And it says here, display to public, yes. We will say display to public, no. Uh, so anything here, we can say yes or no. Uh, and that's if it's going to display to the public. For example, this one here, concurrent user says yes. And if we had it filled in, then we would see that here as well. If it's not filled in in the license, we don't see it. Let's go fill in the concurrent user. Uh, I don't see it here, so let's go fill it in. Concurrent user, let's first of all save this. We removed the database protection clause, save. Let's go into the license. I'm back into the Alma menu, not in the configuration menu. And we'll go to acquisitions, acquisitions, infrastructure licenses. And for the AHEN publishing, in the license terms, we will say concurrent user. It wasn't filled in as we see. Now I will fill it in so it will display. We will say 12 and save. Okay, it was updated. So that license is already in the electronic collection. Let's come back here and let's do another search. There we go, available online. Show license. Okay, now we do have concurrent user. It wasn't filled in before, so there was no data to show. You notice here, we don't have concurrent user. And let's go see if database protection override clause was removed back here. And we don't see database protection override clause here. Or to be more exact, we don't see data. Yeah, that's it is what it's called. We don't see any more database protection override clause that was removed. Uh, so that's how we can display or not display, if we don't want to, the license information in the view online. And it's also how we can determine which of the terms in the license will or will not appear uh, in the list of license terms to the end user. Okay, I saw a couple of chats came in, so let me go take a look there and see what's going on. Um, okay, it looks like someone asked and someone answered. Okay. Um, are you going to talk about CDI? Today, we're not going to be talking about CDI. No, today, we're not talking anything about CDI. It's not on the plan. The, the, the act, these are actual questions. I wanted to keep it not just making up things. These are questions which really came in through the chats or emails afterwards. So these four topics were chosen. Someone asked, display of license information. I take it the example shown works for Prevo V. 
Is it the same discovery wise for Primo back office? Yes, it is. It's the same method. If you still have uh, Primo back office, those who aren't familiar with Primo back office, it's the Primo before we had Primo V and it works the same there. Uh, someone says display of license information. I take it the example. Okay. That's the same question. Someone says, oh, I see we have some people here who were in my session this morning at uh, 6 a.m. <laughs> okay. Uh, there is a standard format for licenses, which I think Alma supports. Yes, we do support the person wrote here, Onyx. We do support that. We, does anyone know if this is used in real life? Okay, so he's asking other people. There's a standard format for licenses. Okay, it looks like the same question. So, yes, the, the Onyx licenses are used in real life. Someone says, I once got in touch with one of our vendors' contacts, and I asked him about the Onyx. The answer was something like, what are you talking about? Okay, it is a format. It is supported. Uh, if it's used or not, that's up to the institutions. It is supported. Okay, let's move on to the next topic. We're right on track here because we're 15 minutes done, one quarter, and we have four topics. So. Um, oh, this one always comes up, by the way. The next one. How to use display logic rules to make, to make only certain collections appear in Primo View It. Okay. This is perhaps one of the most popular questions phrased in different ways that comes up in various forums regarding electronic resources in Primo. Okay. So let's see the, the question here. We have the title Meat Trades Journal in three different electronic collections. By the way, next week we're talking about the new overlap analysis, and then you would see which uh, portfolios you have in multiple collections. That's next week, the overlap analysis. Okay, when it appears in the Primo View It, the end user sees a link from all three electronic collections. Yep, that's the case. We want only one of the electronic collections to appear. In a recent webinar on a different topic, I asked about this and you said something about using display logic rules. Could you tell me exactly what you mean, meant? Okay, so let's take a look at our, our specific example here. Uh, so this is Meat Trades Journal and I put all these examples in my environment here. So let's say I go here to all titles, meet trades journals, and we'll go by portfolio. And I see here under the electronic that it's in three different collections, Gale Cengage, Nexus, and Culinary Arts Collection. In fact, I'm going to take a picture of this as well because we're going to need this later. <clears throat> so it's in these three collections. And let's go on. So let's see how it behaves now. This is what I just showed now, that it's in all three of those. The search that we just saw in the PowerPoint was simply doing the same thing in an electronic portfolio search, where again, we can see that it's in the Culinary Arts Collection, Nexus UK, and Galeson Gage. Let's move on. Oh, sorry. So let's go look at that also in Primo. So I'm going to take with me this time also the ISSN, just so I can get directly there in case there's more results with Meat Trades Journal. Okay, back into Primo. Oh, looks like I lost my Primo. Sorry about that. We can pop in there fairly quickly. And here we are. Okay, so someone comes along and searches for Meat Trades Journal. Library catalog. So here we are, the person comes along and clicks available online. Ah, now he's seeing two of them. I think I know why he's seeing two of them and not three of them. That's because it looks like this one is no longer active. So we will fix that. Okay, so in a little bit that will appear. But in any case, we got two of them. 
So let's say now we only want one of them to appear. So let's move on here. Okay, so now we're going to use the display logic rules to make one appear. We're going to set a condition before we go on and look at it. We're going to set a condition and say if uh, full text exists for collection X, then don't show collection Y or collection Z or do show or all kinds of things. So that's what we're going to do now. So let's go in, Alma, to the configuration and the fulfillment and the display logic rules. And we'll add one now. Let's just do another search here. Maybe that activation will already appear in the available online. No, nope. okay, but let's take a picture of this one as well so we can compare afterwards with what we got. And so now we've got this one and it's both of them. So let's say I want to say now, if I have Nexus UK and I have Gales Engage Business Collection, then only display Gales Engage Business Collection. Don't display Nexus UK. That's what we'll say right now in our example. So we'll say add rule. I could limit this by certain user groups, but I'm not going to do it by certain user groups. I'm going to do it for everybody, which means I won't fill it in. And I will say hide the service full text. Notice once I added the full text, I got more fields. I'm going to do that again to show. I said add rule. Once I add a service here, I get more fields because it depends on what service I'm adding, what the other fields will be. So I'm saying if we have hide the service full text with the electronic collection with value. So I'm going to hide the Nexus, Nexus UK. If service exists, full text with electronic collection. Now let's go see which one we're talking about. Gales Engage Business Collection. Okay, I could also limit it by campus, those using campus. So what do we got here? Hide the service full text with electronic collection Nexus UK. If we have Full text with electronic collection, Gales Engage business collection. Add and close. Now let's try that again. Uh, where is the one we just had? Here it is. Goes to the bottom. Now, by the way, these also work in order, like most of the rules in Alma. Actually, all of the rules in Alma, they work top to bottom. So if something were to... Uh, conflict with this for example if something said for user group undergraduate don't display gales engage then of course it would work top to bottom and then it wouldn't work here because gales engage wouldn't work if the user was logged in as a undergraduate so i'm going to move this to the top now this is part of our new ui where we don't have to click the arrows to move things we can just drag so i'm just going to drag this up and let's put it all the way on top. Where was that one? Uh, this one here. So now it's all the way on top. Had the service with full text with electronic collection Nexus UK if exists Gales Engage. So here we go. Let's try it again now. Another search. Available online. Beautiful. We no longer have Nexus UK. We're going to show the picture. We used to have Nexus UK right here, and we no longer do because we said if exists, Gales, uh, we said hide Nexus UK if we have the Gales Engage business collection. If I were to come along here and deactivate this one, or delete it, of course, now it's deactivated. Now I should get the Nexus UK again, available online. And now I again have the Nexus UK. 
Okay. Uh, let's just make sure we covered everything. Then I'll look at the chats. So what did we do? We added a rule. Uh, we said hide the service, hide the service full text. Um, this was using another example, culinary arts collection, et cetera, et cetera. Um, but same principle. We saved it. And then we went in and we saw that things changed. Okay. Um, and again, like I pointed out, Orally, the order is important because two, two rules could potentially work on conflicting conditions. Okay, let's see if there's any questions or comments here. I will point out actually also the discovery interface display logic rules is very powerful. Uh, you can control a lot of what appears. We hided the service, or hid, excuse me. We hid the service full text. You can also hide all kinds of things. For example, if you don't want a hold request to appear, you can say hide the hold request. Of course, that's for physical, but I'm just pointing out there's a lot of different options here. Hide or hide the digitization request uh, if exists full text for something, for example. Okay, let's go look at the chats here. Okay. Um, how to use the GES? GES is short for General Electronic Services or Display Rules for resources with specific login requirements. For example, restricted access that needs specific login. I'm not sure exactly what you mean. Do you mean hide it if it requires special login? There is no specific rule that states if it's full text with login, but if you want to clarify exactly what you're talking about here, uh, and let's look while, while you're asking or while you're clarifying, the options which we can use here are these so we got if there's a booking request if there's a uh what to hide let's first of all hide something and then we'll say what's the condition with electronic collection with value whatever if exists service so these are the conditions and there's not something here that says if the target uh, electronic resources requires an additional login it will appear Okay, so let's return to the chat. Is it only possible to do this on a named collection basis? Could you tell it to display the one with the most current holdings? No, you can't say display the one with the most current holdings, but what you could do on a practical level is say, let's go back to my example here because it's actually a situation like that. I could say this one has a valuable from 2009 and this one has a valuable from 2012 to 2018. So in the real world, I would probably want to display the Nexus UK simply because it has more coverage, but there is no parameter to say display only the one that has more coverage and more recent coverage, et cetera. There is no parameter like that. Okay, let me come back here. And let me come back to the chat. Okay. It seems to me that I would have to implement many rules because there are really many possible combinations of licenses. Yes, but most institutions have, or I would say most, many institutions have many rules uh, because they would want to not have the user we're going to see next week when we talk about the overlap analysis that there are cases where one portfolio exists in many different collections. That's always the case. Of course, there's a goal to try to make it smaller, which means that you're not paying for the same resource twice. Uh, but that's not always possible because there's other resources in another collection that you do need. But in any case, uh, because one portfolio potentially will appear in multiple collections, places have many rules so that the end user won't see a big long list here in the view online. So yes, 
you potentially will need to make many rules or will want to make many rules. Um, Oh, someone says they want to. Win. OK, so the person who asked about that, it requires a login. Um, stated that they didn't want to remove it. They wanted to inform the user of that requirement. So we had that. I'm, I'll add it right now, even though it wasn't part of the original plan. But there is a public note. For example, let's take this meat trades journal and make a public note. The person answered that they want to person I asked what they wanted to do with that resource that required an additional logon, login, you can do that with a public note. And let's do that. So let's go to that portfolio, the meat trades. And let's take this one from Nexus UK. And let's go to the notes. And let's make a public note. This resource will require an additional login with the vendor nexus or whatever you'd like to put there okay save okay so that should be all saved and let's go back to our rule and say we only want nexus now so right now, let's search for that. A valuable online. OK, we don't even have to say only Nexus. So now you've got this. So if your goal is to inform the user, that's the way to do it. OK, did that answer your question? Can we add a link to the public note to a guide, for example? You know, I've never tried that. Let's see. If we can make a link to a, that would be interesting. Let's give it a try. Then we'll move on. We get all these interesting ones. So I might be able to just put in a, a URL. HTTP. Let's just see. Just to get a legitimate welcome to Nexus Lexus. Okay. So let's say, just so I got something. We might need to do an ahref or something, but let's just see what happens. Save. And someone comes around now, does the search. A valuable online. Look at that. Beautiful. So, yes, you can. So, all of your questions were answered here. You want to have a note to the user that it requires login. You want to have a link. You can do it all. Okay. Uh, let me see if there's any anything else urgent here. We do want to move on. So let's go back to the chat. Um, okay, it looks like we've covered someone asked, there's a parameter called user groups with restricted access. Perhaps it would work for the question of someone just asked about restricting users. Uh, restricting users can be done via the discovery interface display logic rules. I didn't do it, but I did point it out. When we're dealing with a display logic rule, it can be applied only to specific users, user groups. Okay, so let's move on now. I will just close this a bit. All right. So this one we've covered. And understanding the meaning, let's do the linking level because I want to make sure we cover that one in case we run out of time. Another popular one. Um, so various electronic collections, before we read here, I'll explain, have something called the linking level. It's not something that you can change. And it's not something that we ex Libras can change. This is something done by the vendor. And it means when you go and click the view it of a electronic resource, which belongs, for example, to a journal, it could theoretically be a book chapter, but we're going to talk about articles and journals because that's the most popular time this question comes up. 
uh, the linking level determines will the user go right to the article or will the user go to the journal and then need to go search at the vendor site in the journal for the specific article that he or she wants. And even when the linking level is article, it won't always go to the article. It will only go to the article if the sufficient metadata is supplied. So that, that sufficient metadata being either a DOI, a digital object identifier, or an ISSN and then volume issue, et cetera. So it know pages, whatever, to go right to the article. Let's see what we're talking about here. So someone asks, and this did not come from an email. This was during a session. Someone put this in the chat. How come in Primo, after I find an article in CDI and click a valuable online, sometimes the link goes directly to the article, sometimes the link goes to the journal, and then I have to search the journal for the specific article. And we're going to see an example of this, and then we're going to see why. Okay, so high-level answer is what I just explained. Whether or not the link goes directly to the journal or to the uh, specific article depends on what the linking level is. If the linking level is journal, it's going to go to the journal. If the linking level is article, it will attempt to go directly to the article. I didn't say here it will go to the article, and I tried a couple of them. Most of them do go to the article, but not all of them. We say attempt to because it depends on the metadata being sent in the open URL, and we're going to take a look at that. Okay, so let's take a look here at LSE Press Journals. So I'm going to do a search here for electronic collection. LSE Press Journals. And I'm going to write down on the side here what we're doing because this, this is, could potentially get complicated. So let me open up a little Word document here. So we're saying that the electronic collection this has and i'll show it to everybody this has a linking level journal so it's not going to a level of an article it's going to a journal all right let's go on And if we want to look at that, just, just for general knowledge, there's a program. I say program. It's, it's a, a script of some sort that the vendor is using. I'm going to go to edit the service. You'll recall from last time we can go right to the service here. Uh, that the vendor uses, in this case, bulk, bulk basically means go to the journal. It doesn't run any kind of a special program. That's the parser. So. This one is supposed to go to the journal, journal level. And one of the journals in that collection is the Journal of Illicit Economies and Development. If I come into this LSE Press Journal and I go to the portfolio list, I see Journal of Illicit Economies and Development. So I'm going to say this collection has journal this. We'll see why I'm writing all this in a moment, uh, and I'll make that a little larger. Okay, now there's an article inside that journal. The article is called this, and it's in that journal. And it's in that year, et cetera, which is within our coverage. It's from 2022. So let's just take a look here. I'm going to edit this portfolio coverage from 2019. So we're covered on 2022, which is when the journal is from. So I'm going to say here that article this is in this journal, which is in this collection. So it's like a hierarchy. The article is in the journal, the journal is in the collection, and the collection has linking level journal. So now if I come along and I search for this, let's come back into Primo and let's search for it. I'm searching for the article in the Central Discovery Index. And I find it 
in the Journal of Illicit Economies. When I click a valuable online, and then the link for LS, LES journals, let's let that load a moment. Interesting, it's taking a while to load. There we go. Now, when I click the LES press journals, I'm arriving to the whole level of the journal. So now if I want to go to volume, whatever, year, whatever, I need to search within here, within the vendor's interface. So that's an example of a journal level. Now let's take a look at an article level. And again, I or a user cannot just go and change that in the electronic collection name LES journals. This is determined by the vendor. Uh, now we're looking at one. Oh, this one's article, but we don't want to use that one. Let me go get LES, whatever that one was. Electronic collection. Oh, LSE. What was it? Sorry about that. LSE. Okay. So this we can't change. That's how it is in the community zone because that's how the vendor is supplying it. And we just have to accept it. Okay, linking level journal in the community zone. Now, let's take a look at an example of article level. So, uh, this is everything we just did. Now, Royal Society Publications is linking level article. So, let's first of all put that here so we can follow along what we're doing. Okay, so electronic collection that has linking level article. Let's go take a look at that. Royal Society Publications Free. Okay, linking level article. Let's go look at our portfolios here because we're going to take an example of an article that is in one of the portfolios. Um, okay. May as well use the example here. Oh, by the way, let's take a look here. Remember the other one had bulk bulk? When we went into the service. So now we see here in the linking this one's using a pro a parser is actually called but something at the Royal Society of Publishing is using this to take the information from that the, the metadata that is being sent <coughs> and get the user right to the article level. So let's take a look at that. Let's move a little quickly. We're running out of time. Uh, so we have a portfolio called biology letters inside here. If we come in here to the portfolio list and we go to biology letters, that's one of the portfolios. And we have an article in there called Camouflage Da 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 from 2005. So, let's put that here, that biology letters is a resource in the collection. And let's say that article, that is in that resource. So again, we have an article inside Biology Letters. Biology Letters is in Royal Society of Publications Free. Royal Society of Publications Free is linking level article. Okay, so let's go search for this article in Primo. And by the way, this is not only if you're coming from Primo, if you were in PubMed or a, a vendor interface, uh, anywhere where you're using the Alma link resolver, but let's not get too complicated now. 
Uh, but anytime you're accessing this, this is what it's using, that level. So now I'm going to click here, Royal Society Publications Free. And now I'm directly at the article. I'm already in that article right here. I'm, I'm not in Royal Society of Publishing and then go need to search. I'm right at the article. Here I am. I'm in the article, article level. I'm directly at the article. So that's article level. Now, this what I'm going to show now is just general information kind of for the fun. Uh, just to see what it's doing. If I do a search here and then I click available online or better yet, I come and I search, I get there. I'm going to add something to the end of this URL. In fact, I'll take this whole URL with me. This is like a little little primo trick. And it's also, by the way, I've got this in the in the presentation. I'm going to add to the end of this a note. I called it a note. So if I come in and I add to the end of that URL this here, this CTO means context, context object. We'll see what it is. It's kind of technical, but it's kind of fun to do. If I add to the end of that, this, they added this right here. So now I have a new link here called display CTO because this will show me now what metadata is being sent in what's called the open URL that's going to get that article. So this is what it's sending. It's sending uh, the title, the place, that it's an article, the first names of the authors, a normalized ISSN, et cetera. And we have this open URL, which if I were to place this in a browser, gives me that availability tab you'll see in a moment. This is what displays more nicely inside the View It tab. So it's just a little trick. It's all in the PowerPoint if you want to play around and you can see what is the open URL being used and what kind of data is being sent. This is what we use sometimes when we discover that a link is not working. Well, that means something's going on with the vendors, some kind of uh, information is not being sent or is not being sent properly. Okay, let me see if there's any questions about that, the linking level, and if not, we're going to move on. Nope, no more questions. Everyone's still with me? I'm surprised there's no questions. Just send in a chat and say, yes, we still hear you, Yoel, just to make sure people are still, okay, people still hear me, okay. Making sure I didn't miss any here. I see there's a couple of people who are on this who are on the 6 a.m. when it wasn't 6 a.m. for the other people, but about four or five hours ago, we had another session and I see some of the same people. Okay, let's now move on to another popular one. So now understanding the meaning and implication of expand my results in Primo V. Okay, so someone says we have a subscription to the journal, Journal of Oral and Facial Pain and Headache. The portfolio in Alma is active. I see some of the articles from this journal when I search CDI and Primo, but other articles I do not see how come. Okay. Classic question. Classic. Okay. And the person says, I do see this when searching, but let's, let me first of all make sure that I have this journal. I believe I do, but let's see, unless I made this whole example in a different uh, place. So I'm going to say electronic portfolios, journal of oral and facial pain and headache. Okay, so I have one portfolio in the CCC get it now. And I'm just going to write this down too in case this comes into play. So I have, I can get rid of this. I have the journal of oral and facial pain and headache. And I have this coverage. Now, I should also check if I have an embargo. Embargo is the latest 
ones sometimes aren't included. Like the last month, you might not be able to see if there's an embargo here. There is no embargo. That means they got right up to the latest published one. Okay. Let's move on. I'm going to close some of these browsers. This I don't need and this I don't need. Okay. This I'll make a little more normal. So let's go on. So this one is 2014. This one's 2013. So we already see the second one here. I should not. Well, I shouldn't say I should not see, but let's just take note. It's before my coverage. So if I come along now and I search for this one here, diagnostic, I won't try to pronounce that word. That's a long article. Okay. So let's search for that. Searching in CDI search. Okay, so I've got it. And let's make sure that's mine. So I see it. And one through article. Let's say I want a valuable on. I'm just going to try to get this a little smaller. Uh, article and resource type. Let's say journal title, even. This is mine, the Journal of. Oral, what was it called? Journal of Oral and Facial Pain and Headache. There it is. Okay, so I get it. They're all in that journal. And I have it. These, these are just finding others which have similar titles or the same words appear, but this is mine. So I do see it. However, let's go search for the one from 2013. I'll get rid of these facets. So this one here, Epidemiology of Bruxism in Adults, a Systematic View of the Literature. So this one here, I don't get. These you can see are all other ones. And if I were to try to go to the journal title, I don't have my journal title. My journal title is Journal of Oral and Facial Pain and Headache. This is something different. That's not pain and headache. So I don't have it. And we can see here I don't have it. They're ones that also have the same words. So <clears throat> the reason I don't see it is because even though I do have, <clears throat> excuse me, I do have the resource, I do have the Journal of Oral and Facial Pain and Headache that it's in, but I don't see it because it's not within my coverage. However, if I want to know, or if an end user or anybody wants to know, do does this not appear because it's not in CDI? CDI is a central discovery index of citations. Citations being titles of journal articles, newspaper articles, even eBooks, et cetera. So it might be, like if I were to type here, um, apples oranges bananas and whatever and i don't get it in cdi it's because there is no article like that in cdi so when i searched for this one and i didn't find it someone might want to know am i not finding it because it's not in cdi or am i not finding it because my institution does not have this either doesn't have the journal or has a journal without proper coverage so that's the expand my results here. So if I click the expand my results, now I get everything that's in CDI. And I do get the one in the Journal of Oral, this one right here, you can see. This one is in the Journal of Oral and Facial Pain and Headache. So in summary, by clicking the expand my results, I see that I do they, the resource does exist in the Central Discovery Index, and the reason I don't get it when I did not have expand my results checked is because uh, we don't my institution does not have 
access to that. Okay, that's the general what is the expand my results. Now it's possible to remove this. It's also possible to rename it and many institutions do rename it like expand by my institution or search the entire index or whatever. So it's possible also to remove that. All this I already showed, we're gonna skip it. Okay, so, all right, we showed all that. It's possible to remove it. And if we remove it, it will be as if it's always checked. I'll show you what we mean. So now if we come into the search profiles, I'm gonna say uh, configuration, discovery, search configuration, search profiles. And if I come to the central index, the CDI and edit, this filter by availability is what makes the expand my results appear. If I uncheck that and I save, and I come and search again, um, let's actually come right back in because I wanna refresh the whole thing. And I'll sign in too, just in case it's required. Okay. And now I'm going to search again for this one here, which is in 2013. I still have the expand my results. Very interesting. Hold on one moment. We came here, search profile, central index edit, uncheck. Maybe I never saved. Let's take a look. And central index, or it has to refresh. No, it is unchecked. Save. Let's even take another browser. And Okay, now I no longer have here, expand your results. And I am seeing the 2013 one. So the expand my results got removed and it behaves as if it is checked as expand my results, which is exactly what it states here. It behaves as if expand my results is checked. I'm seeing the 2013 one, but it's telling me no online access because my institution does not have coverage for it. You remember we have from 2014 on, and this is 2013. Let's put that back now. Discovery, search profiles, we're gonna check it again. Central index, edit, check it again. Make sure we save it this time. I'm gonna close and open my browser this time as well and go into Google. Okay, let's go into the Primo. Do that search again. CDI. Now again, I have my expand my results, so I'm not seeing what I wanted. I don't see that article here. Expand my results. And now I do, but it's telling me I don't have access because I don't have the coverage for it. Okay, um, we're not gonna be able to get to the rest of the chat here because we're already over time. Well, we're exactly at the end of the time. Uh, someone did say though, does this solution not take the time coverage into account? I think we did discuss the coverage. The fact that it says no online access and the fact that it only appears when I do expand my results is because my coverage, if that's what you're referring to, the coverage, my coverage of this journal, if you recall, begins in 2014. So it is taking that into account, and that's why I only see it when I do expand my results. 
Okay, so thanks a lot, everybody, for joining. We hope to see you next week. Next week, we stated, is the overlap analysis. Uh, let's just confirm that next week is the overlap analysis. And then we'll close. So let's just go in here and make sure uh, among the many webinar series that we're running here. So next week will be 7 and 7. It should be the 14th. Overlap analysis. Yes. So we hope to see you next week for overlap analysis. Have a nice day. And we will post the recording and let everybody know it's ready. Bye-bye.